Hey guys and welcome back to my YouTube video. So in the last video I was telling you guys that I am trying to make a custom layer in Keros. And I actually succeeded in that. So with all of the research actually uh, paid off. And I managed to do this. And in this video I will teach you how you can even you can do that same thing by yourself. One thing I want to tell you guys with before starting this video is you should have a fundamental understanding of TensorFlow and you should at least be knowing a good amount of TensorFlow. So you should be knowing how you can load in your own data, what a convolutionary neural network is, what max pooling is, and what compilation optimizers, metrics, and fit and epochs and all that means. Uh, because otherwise you will not be able to understand what I'm doing over here. Uh, this is the code, uh, real code. I'll explain to you, don't worry about it. So that's why. So you should be knowing that because the things I've done here is pretty advanced TensorFlow. So that's why. So let's just get started. So I will import TensorFlow as TF from TensorFlow. Import Keras. Then I need to uh, from TensorFlow dot keras import layers. So this is a pretty important import because this will actually allow us to do all of that. So now some last import. So from TensorFlow dot keras dot preprocessing dot image import uh, image data generator and from tensorflow dot keras dot reprocessing import image so these are the imports we are going to be dealing with uh, at least right now these are the imports we are going to be making uh, later on if you want to do some other ones or modify these existing imports we can obviously do that so let's just grab our train image and grab the image data generator and get the rescale property of it. I'm not going to be explaining you what all of this means because I already have tons and tons of videos on it. Now we'll make a data set out of it. So train and put data set. Now I have done it with my emotions neural network. Uh, so I'm just going to copy this piece of code. Because that's something I've always done. So, that so now we actually need to make our own custom layer. So making the custom layer. To do that, we need to use uh, object oriented programming. You should be knowing a really like fundamental understanding of how object oriented programming works. So, the in, uh, use of classes and objects. If you don't know that, uh, go learn it before following along because you won't understand. So class, I will just name it C and N block. And then we need to like inherit from the layers dot layer. So this is also part of object oriented programming. So inheritance, you need to learn all of it. So now we uh, put in a constructor. So def underscore init underscore. And then we type out self out underscore channels so how many channels it's going to be which are going to be outputted and the kernel size as i told you kernel size is something which you will know if you know uh, how the cnns work so that's why so we now may need to make a super class which will be the cnn block and then we just take it again this is object oriented programming if you don't know then hold on it then we initialize it, uh, tuple underscore, and uh, pass in the parentheses. Now we just type out self dot c o n v is equals to layers dot conv to be so convolutionary layer. Now inside it will take some parameters. So the out underscore channels. So the that then the kernel size and the padding. Which will be saved. 
Now I'm not gonna get into padding right now, but it's like use for the data. So yeah. And then self dot b n and we just type out layers dot batch normalization. So what a batch normalization layer does it will introduce uh, like some non trainable parameters in our neural network. So uh, the the batch normalization layer is not that important, but uh, it, we usually define it over here because it just makes good sense. So yeah. So now we need to make a call method on the CNN block. So basically, what the call method does, it will like actually allow us to uh, like actually in like um, pass it in so let me actually show it to you so call we just about cell comma input underscore tensor so it will be that the input will be in the form of a tensor so tensor is like if you don't know what a tensor is just it's like uh, the code to TensorFlow, so TensorFlow deals with tensors, so it's like a type of a uh, data type, uh, and yeah, and we go training is equals to false. So, uh, this is pretty deep, so I'm not gonna get into all of this because it will introduce a big deal of complexity to this video, so video uh, which will really make this video pretty complicated. Uh, yeah, so I'm not gonna get into that. Then we type of self.conv, so the con, and then we make it equal to the input tensor. So the, that's what we need to do over here. Then we type of x is equal to the self.batch normalization, and it will be equal to the x, so the small x, and the training will be three. Then we just type out x is equal to tf dot nn dot really so the activation function really on the x and then we just simply tap on return x so there we go so now what we need to do is well we can actually now well make the model so what i will do is i will just tap on model equals to keras dot sequential and instead of passing in like keras.layers.tens or keras.layers.conf2d, I'll pass in cnn block and then I want 64 uh, uh, kernel size of 32. Uh, then I'm just going to copy this, paste it over here. Quick. So this one will be 64. Right, and this one will be 128. Then we just type out keras dot actually not keras dot layers. We just type out layers dot flatten and layers dot dense. So the dense will be having two neurons or two nodes and activation function of the LED. So now the reason why we needed to pass it in because well otherwise we would get an error because we won't have the amount of nodes. Now we just com uh, compile the model so model dot compile. So we give it a optimizer of Adam a loss function of sparse that a causal loss entropy and metrics on accuracy now what i have done over here i just wanted to tell you is some complicated tensorflow and complicated python in general so you are uh, i don't like you don't need to make custom layers for every single neural network that you are making so like a lot of people will be like now everything that I do I'll be really using custom layers. That's not the case because uh, custom layers are only used when you want a high degree of control over the model you are making. Just a second guys I will be back. Alright so I'm back.
so uh so like you don't need to do it the only reason why you would want to do this is if you want a very high degree of control on your network so if you are actually like making this for a multi-million dollar company and you need a hundred percent accuracy only then you will want to like actually implement custom layers and uh, do all of this complex uh, code otherwise the layers with keras are good enough and will actually make, allow you to make very good neural networks and even like people who are specialized in machine learning do not really do this uh, unless and until they really want to make a very complex neural network so that's just something i wanted to like tell you so you don't need to be like every single network i make now should be with this because you can even see the amount of code required has increased significantly so now i'll just fit the model on the train underscore data set and i will just pass it any box so now and i will also just go model dot summary so it will give us a summary on the model so now you will see what will happen so if i just run the code over here uh, this was what i had done before uh, it will take a second or two so yeah so you can see on implementing a custom layer it in increased the code greatly like uh, and if we are making a neural network without custom layers like let me show it to you like if i just show you my covid 19 neural network uh, the reason why this is so long is because i was actually messing with it a lot and i passed in a lot of things and normal approaches and saving wow. and all of that so that's why it's pretty long <coughs> otherwise you can see it's not that long so you sh should not be like uh always implement this just wanted to get that thing clear and yeah i uh, don't know why this is taking so long we scale it and we start the terminal I think uh, since I'm recording, it's taking so much of time because uh, like OBS is also pretty heavy and the last time when I was running it, it was very fast. So you can see, I'll, you can see what it is. So if you, you can see over here also if you want to see some Keras documentation you can even just go to definition uh, yeah there you go so all right what happened okay so i did not spell sparse categorical cross entropy uh, correctly let me just take this copy it and paste it over here Now it should probably work. Okay, I think it's working. There we go. So now it's working. Uh, the model is working correctly. Uh, yeah, you will be seeing some things. Alright, so I trained the model on three box. I reduced it to three and got a 52% accuracy. So yeah, uh, I think I'm gonna wrap up this video over here. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, I was talking about doing this for a long time. Uh, it required a ton of research uh, to do this. Uh, all of this video was taken from this guy called Aladdin Person. So uh, big shout out to him because like I would have not able, been able to do it all by myself. So some of this was taken from his youtube channel some of it was done through research and yeah so that's it for today guys i hope you enjoyed the video if you did like and subscribe to the channel and i will see you in another youtube video